Doc Talk is brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, Sure Trace Mineral Supplementation by Timed Injection. Hi folks, welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. Sure glad that you joined us today. Today our guest is going to be Dr. Pat Gordon, who's a senior clinician and director of food animal veterinary medicine at Iowa State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. We're going to talk about milk quality, milk residues. It's sure to be a great show, and I'm glad that you joined us. In the last three years, we've changed some things in our AI protocol, one of which was the use of multi men We've seen a significant increase in our AI pregnancy rate. The cost of an embryo program is significant, and we feel that if we were able to even get one more pregnancy out of, out of a cow, uh, that would pay for the whole cost of the whole bottle of multi men right there. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. This segment is brought to you by Rotomix, manufactured in the USA and designed for feeding performance in the feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow-calf operations. Pat, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's always a, a pleasure to have veterinarians on the show and, and Specifically, it's exciting for me to come back to my alma mater here but, uh, and spend some time at Iowa State University. But folks, this is Dr. Pat Gordon. And Pat, you're the senior clinician and yep. you're the director here of the Food Animal Veterinary Medicine. And can you talk to me a little bit about just kind of what your role is here and, and some of the things that you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis? Sure. Um, you know, our role is to try to get students in contact with uh, food animals, to get them experiences with food animals. So we have an in-house clinic that's been growing over the years and bringing animals in, but we've also have an ambulatory unit here where we take students to the field, just like a reg regular large animal veterinarian would, and expose them to the, uh, the, the real life veterinary experiences that they're gonna get in practice. Well, I think that's great. And as a professor myself, I think the more hands-on and getting the techniques in your hands, the better. But this is quite a facility y'all have. And and I've uh, been really impressed so far with the visit and coming home. But oh, thanks. We're gonna talk about milk quality or milk residues, and right. I know that you're doing a lot of research and, and a lot of stuff out in the field in, in, in this area. Kind of give us the 30,000 foot view of, of where we're at, why is it important, those yeah. types of things. Well, first of all, where we're at, the, the dairy industry is, the, the, the food product that they sell is one of the most tested products as far as antimicrobial products go. Um, in the food industry. So our, our farmers are really used to dealing with having their products scrutinized all the time for antibiotics. Um, about two years ago, the FDA decided they wanted to compare some farms with some history of meat residues to some farms that had no history of meat residues. So we have this FDA milk survey that's coming out that's got everybody really kind of nervous about what's going to happen because it's a multi-component survey. They're testing for over 30 products in one sweep. Um, looking to see if there's any residues of significance between those two particular groups of farms. So right now we're really looking to see, you know, waiting to see what that's going to, to, to uh, provide as far as future testing may, may, uh, that may be dictated. So in these, these surveys coming off the farms, when they're looking at the, the different levels of, of residues, we're talking antibiotics, other Right. Drugs, NSAIDs, yeah. different things, that, yes. and the different classes of compounds. Right. So the, the the majority of the products are antibiotics because that's the majority of the of, of the drugs that are used on dairy farms. But we also have NSAIDs like flunixin. Um, we have uh, uh, enthelmintics, and we also have uh, antihistamine products that are being looked at because all of those products are used on dairy farms. So the uh, the survey that they have has the ability to look at all those products at very very low levels. So I assume that. As we've gone through time, the technology to detect these has improved. Yeah, we're, we're, they're using LCMS MS technology. So it, it's, it's sensitive down to the parts per billion, and if they set it up correctly, they could potentially go down to parts per trillion um, <laughs> levels of quantification. So that the, it's, it's extremely sensitive technology. And I don't think people understand the scrutiny that we go through on a day-to-day -day basis as veterinarians or as producers to provide that safe milk. Yeah, that's that's very true. And our our, our producers are are uh, accustomed to providing a safe product to the um, to the consumer all the time. And hopefully that this will support that um, fact that they actually are doing a very good job of, of reducing residues in milk. Well, it's a great time for us to take a break. Okay. When we come back, more with Dr. Pat Gordon. You're watching Doc Talk, and we're sure glad that you joined us. 
This segment was brought to you by Brute Cattle Equipment, makers of the Brute Stealth Hydraulic Chute. If the chute fits, swear by it. Visit our website for more information. And by Lalaman Animal Nutrition, dedicated to the development and production of natural and differential solutions for animal nutrition. Hey there, it's Dr. Dan from Doc Talk. Be sure to join me next week as we're going to discuss vaccinations and how they work. Be sure to join me here every Monday afternoon at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on RFD TV. And I'll see you down the road. Got cattle? Rotomix manufactures a complete line of energy efficient rotary and vertical feed mixers for feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow calf operations. Our mixers are available with the patented Generation 2 Staggered Rotor, the industry standard for feeding wet rations that include wet distiller's grain. Made in the USA, Rotomix mixers are designed for feeding performance that American cattlemen and dairy producers have come to expect. Rotomix, proud to offer a better mix in less time using less fuel. Working your cattle just got easier. Introducing the new Vet Gun Delivery System, a new way to apply topical insecticides to your cattle. The Vet Gun lets you remotely treat cattle with effective parasite control, so you can do it from an ATV, on horseback, or just walking among the herd. It's that simple. The proven topical insecticide AML Vet Cap is used with the Vet Gun. It works fast to control horn flies and lice while minimizing stress on your cattle. Fast, easy, effective. Vet Gun. Check with your animal health supplier for availability. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Hello friends, I'm Ernie Rodina. And I'm Don Dawson with the Better Horses Radio Show. For over nine years, we've been bringing the Better Horses Radio Show to markets all across the Midwest. We talk about God, lots about horses. We talk about cows, we talk about horse health, we talk to top trainers, and we even talk about Roy Rogers. We are having a blast with Better Horses Radio Show and would love to take it to a market near you. So visit our website at betterhorsesradio.com and let us or your local radio station know you'd like to hear it in your area. The Better Horses Radio Show is unbelievable. This segment is brought to you by Norbrook Laboratories, manufacturers of Enriflox 100, the newest addition to your arsenal for treating bovine and swine respiratory disease. Hi there, folks. Welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, and we're here on the campus of Iowa State University, and we're speaking with Dr. Pat Gordon, who's a senior clinician and director of food supply veterinary medicine here at Iowa State's College of Veterinary Medicine. And, Pat, you do a lot of great things for for the students and, and for the industry. And another thing that, that you do a lot of work on is with mastitis right. in the dairy cows. And right. So let's talk a little bit about mastitis and, and, and somatic cell counts and things to that nature. Okay. Well, first of all, um, you know, kind of a, a history of what somatic cell counts are. The, the industry right now, the USDA just released their annual survey and, and showed that we're down below 200,000 on average for somatic, bulk tank somatic cell count uh, on our dairy industry in the United States. Um, and that's, that's a historically low level. It's been going down every year. So, so the farmers are doing a much better job of producing a product that's high quality um, in response to, to, to consumer demands mostly. I mean, we have legal limits which are higher than that, but we're far below that. Um, and the industry is asking for a better product and the, and the producers are, are providing it. So let's, let's back up just a little bit because we have, we have quite a few viewers that maybe aren't familiar with somatic cell count. Okay. And so what exactly is, is somatic cell count? Well, somatic cell count is a measure of, of cells in milk, and that can be a combination of, of uh, production cells that have sloughed off and entered the milk. Um, and in, in, in uninfected cows, the majority of the cells are these epithelial productive cells right. um, that, that are going to be present. Um, when we have an infection enter, a bacterial infection enter, um, much like if, if you and I got a bacterial infection uh, under our skin, white blood cells, neutrophils and whatnot would enter the area to help control the infection. So when there's an infection, the, the rise in somatic cells um, is mostly due to, to white blood cells rapidly entering the area and trying to, to um, help uh, control the infection. So, okay, so when, when that happens, you get an increase in somatic cell count. Correct. And, and that. So, Let's, let's switch gears and, and then move into mastitis or okay. move into to that milk somatic cell count type. How, why, were, why is it important to chart? Well, it's important to chart because it's an indicator of quality. 
Okay. Um, there's lower bacterial levels uh, associated with that coming from the cow side. Mm -hmm. um, so better shelf life for the producer um, or for the, the processor um, so that they have an Im improved product. There's better cheese yield um, because when we have infections in that, in that udder, it causes the protein levels to drop in the milk and it reduces the cheese yield for cheese producers. So overall, it's, it, it helps the, the processor and then the consumer um, have a better better uh, product, better wholesomeness in that product. Gotcha. And then, of course, everything is going through pasteurization. Correct. Between yeah. that. So you're starting out, it's kind of like what we do on the, it's pre-harvest food safety. Exactly. Same thing that we're doing on the beef side yep. to decrease bacteria. Right. Right, exactly. So the, the pasteurization process provides an even safer product, um, better, better food, food security uh, to the consumer. Well, when, when we uh, think about milk quality and we think about the veterinarian, we think about uh, prevention Correct. first. Yes. When we come back from break, maybe we can talk a little bit about prevention of mastitis and okay. some of the things that you're doing in your program here at Iowa State. Okay. Very Thanks good. for joining us, and thank you for joining us here on Doc Talk. We'll be back right after the break. This Meet the Veterinarian is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Dr. Joe Hillhouse, owner of Carson County Vet Clinic in Panhandle, Texas, also serves as the District 8 Director of the American Association of Bovine Practitioners, is a charter organization representative of the Boy Scouts of America, and a member of the Panhandle Lions Club. When Dr. Hillhouse finally carves out some time, you'll find him enjoying the outdoors with a fishing pole in hand. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life, it's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do. Every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine is a leader in food animal research and education. Our researchers are constantly expanding the knowledge of animal health and food safety. Through the Veterinary Health Center and the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Lab, we provide practical services for animal producers. Home of the Beef Cattle Institute, the college is committed to animal welfare training and research. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine, knowledge and service for the future of animal production. This hog is Hanover hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. True Test Group, weighing systems, electronic identification, EID, electric fencing, and dairy automation systems help farmers and ranchers around the world manage the performance of their livestock for ultimate profitability. Hi there, folks. Welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Pat Gordon, and we are on the campus of Iowa State University. Doc Talk has gone on the road, and it's great to be here and spend some time with you here at the College of Veterinary Medicine. And you're doing a lot of great things, and specifically with milk quality, milk residues, and things of that nature. And as we left the break, we we're talking about mastitis. And right. so, what are some of the things as a clinician that you're trying to hammer on as far as working with your producers to prevent mastitis in cows. Right, okay. So working with our, our producers, but also trying to teach our students also. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, from a, from a management of a dairy farm aspect, it's, it's kind of the big picture. What's, what's the underlying cause for disease? And it doesn't really matter what the disease is, but nutrition's number one. Um, and if, if I go onto a dairy farm with a milk quality problem, I kind of step back and look at the whole picture and try to, try to incorporate how healthy the cows are after calving and, and is that affecting their immune system and, and allowing them to control infections that they normally would see every day. So that's number one. Nutrition plays a big part in, on milk quality, on udder health, um, and, and even reproduction and allowing those cows to become get pregnant again and stay, stay in the herd longer uh, for having longer longevity, longevity in the herd. You bet. Um, you know, vaccination is always important. Uh, we have vaccines for multiple things in dairy cows, but one of the more 
um, more successful vaccines that we've implemented is an E. coli mastitis vaccine. It, it, it reduces the uh, uh, severity of E. coli mastitis. It's been a, been a great um, service for our, our, our producers. And timing of vaccines? It, it's extremely important. Uh, we have to try to time the vaccinations around the, the calving time because that's the, the time frame, the first 100 to 150 days after calving is the time that we typically see these, vac or these uh, E. coli infections that are more severe. Um, and we need to make sure that we can put that vaccine in place around their other vaccinations that they're, they're implementing and not interfere with immune function in the cow. Sure, there's only so many lymph nodes and, exactly. and so many things that a cow can partition towards, towards immunology. Right, so yeah, so we try to get that uh, introduced before and right after calving time to, to have the most success. Um, and then, you know, some of the areas that, that I also work in is milking equipment analysis. Uh, it, ca it can be on some farms a huge component, and I'm an independent source, uh, a resource for uh, evaluating that milking equipment. Um, I, I come in with a, without selling them anything except for my expertise. Right. Um, and, and farmers really appreciate that, and it makes it uh, a more successful and uh, I, program. I found that as, as a practitioner as well, you know. Sometimes, you know, even in your own house, you walk by something, walk by something, walk by Correct, something, yeah. and you're like, don't notice it. And somebody else walks in and says, hey, what's this? Yeah. And you're like, dang, you know, that's been there all the time. Yeah. And I think that people don't understand the value of that veterinary client patient relationship, not just for the prescription, but for that second set of eyes right. and that expertise. Yeah, there's things, even on the best farms, you can walk in and find stuff that have been, have been there all along. It's like, why are you guys doing this? It's like, well, that's the way we've always done it. And then you kind of explain to them what the impact is on milk quality. And they're like, oh, wow, we can change that today. Yeah. So, well, and, and that was the other thing is I always found that the best producers are the ones always asking the questions. Yeah, exactly <laughs> right. They're the ones that challenge you. Yeah. Don't make it too easy on me. That's right. Well, we're going to take a break. Okay. When we come back, we're going to talk more with Dr. Pat Gordon. And we'll wrap up here from Iowa State University. You're watching Doc Talk, and we're sure glad you joined us. Ultiman is one of those products you can use to uh, get the ultimate uh, performance out of cattle. Around 90 to 95 percent of our calves are uh, either AI or embryo transplant. Uh, since we've started using the Multiman, we're up around 70 to 75 percent uh, conception on our first AI service. And a product like this is very beneficial for us. Hi, I'm Kevin Auctioner, host of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen and Colorado Ranchers. Join me each week as the National Cattlemen's Beef Association brings you the latest updates in industry information and market news. Plus, each week we provide important educational information and features on cattlemen from across the country just like you. And we can't forget our favorite cowboy poet, Paxter Black. Join me for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, debuting Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern right here on RFD TV. Beef producers asked for it, and Norbrook delivers. Introducing new Enroflox 100, the newest addition to your arsenal for treating bovine respiratory disease. Enroflox 100 is an FDA-approved, ready-to-use injectable antimicrobial solution to treat BRD associated with Mannheimia hemolytica, Pastorella multocida, and Histophilus somni in beef and non-lactating dairy cattle. Administered SQ as a multiple-day therapy. Consult with your veterinarian today about Enroflox 100, the new choice. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hi there, folks. Welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Pat Gordon, who's a senior clinician, and he is the director of the Food Supply Veterinary Medicine Program here at Iowa State University, which I am an alumni here of Iowa State. I have to always... We both, both, we both are. are. Yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, we're going to talk about the program here. you got okay. great program in veterinary medicine and I'm yeah. proud of it and I know you are too we but are, yeah. a lot of really good changes for food animal food supply veterinary right. medicine and for producers and veterinarians like sure yeah if you think about Iowa we're an ag state you so bet. we should have our, our college programs really should support agriculture and that's what your dad when he came in here as a dean he really sold that as this needs to be the preeminent food animal program in the US and and we're, we're working towards that. So I remember the day I started here and I sat in his office and he says, if I don't see you in this office again, I'll be pretty happy because I know you're out supporting our program. You bet. And that's, that's, that's words I've lived by, even though he's now retired. <laughs> um, I, I still try to take that and make it work every day. 
Um, so, you know, we have 145 kids in, our, in our, each class, so we're one of the largest in the country, um, certainly not the largest. Uh, we have a partner program with Nebraska. They put 25 students in our program every year. Uh, we also have contracts with North Dakota, South Dakota, and Connecticut, so we get a diversity of students throughout the country. Yep, and, you know, just you, can, you walk down the halls and you can see the culture that's created here in the student pride in right. the program, mm -hmm. but also you have a very high uh, percentage of students that are interested in food animal diversity. That's right. Yes, I, we do. I would say probably higher in any place I've ever been I, as far I, as elementary I would, schools. I would agree with you on that. Um, you know, our metric for under, or getting a feel for how many students have interest in food animal medicine is when they track their senior year, their final year in vet school, they have to pick whether they want to go into small animal, equine, mixed animal, or food animal. And for the last two years, better than 50% are tracking mixed animal and food animal. So we're getting a lot of students tracking through our program um, because of what we built for them uh, here to get the food animal experiences and ho hopefully get that uh, position once they leave yeah. the college. Once you get through the admissions, it's retention of their interest in food animal, and you guys right. are really doing a great right. job. Right, yeah, and we're trying to get to them at the, young, the, young, um, the, the early underclassmen levels, the freshman year, sophomore year, get our food animal faculty in front of them so they can see, hey, this is somebody I can go talk to to maybe get the background to, um, to do food animal medicine because we're having more and more students enter the program with less and less farm experience, and that becomes a hindrance for them to, to want to enter food animal medicine in the future. So if we can get in front of those students and, and make friends with them, be, become their mentors as freshmen and sophomores, we're going to attract them into the, continue to, to attract them into the uh, uh, into those food animal programs as they get to be juniors and seniors. And I think the other thing that's interesting is being able to tell the student these things, these contemporary issues with antibiotics, food safety, animal right. welfare, Yeah, it's veterinary medicine. It is. It is. Food, food safety is so important that that end product is, is wholesome when it hits the table. Um, the consumer has to have trust in our product and the food, the food animal veterinarian is integral in producing that wholesome food product. Thanks for being on the show today. Right. Thank you. Pat, it is great to be here and great to spend time with you. Thank you for watching Doc Talk today. If you want to know more about what we do at Doc Talk, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. Remember, always work with your local practitioner. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson from Kansas State University here with Dr. Pat Gordon from Iowa State University. You've been watching Doc Talk. We're sure glad you joined us, and I'll see you down the road. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. Doc Talk was brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, sure trace mineral supplementation by timed injection. There are two problems with trace mineral intake in beef cattle. One is simply that uh, intake of trace minerals can be slightly unpredictable. The second thing is that uh, other minerals that are present in the diet in high proportions can actually interfere with trace mineral absorption. Uh, sulfur is a classic example of this problem. Uh, many of the feedstocks we use, like distiller's grain and corn gluten feed, are high in sulfur. In some cases, groundwater and surface water in Kansas can be high in sulfur. Uh, when dietary intake of sulfur is high, that means that copper uh, in particular and, and also possibly zinc can be absorbed from the gut in less than ideal proportions. When injecting a trace mineral product, you bypass that source of trace mineral antagonism in the gut because the, uh, the injected product is taken directly into the circulatory system for processing in the liver and deposition in the various storage sites within the body. A breeding female's body reserves for trace minerals are a little bit like a bank account. When there are periods of, of demand in that breeding female's life, uh, the, her bank account of trace minerals is rapidly consumed. I mean, two examples of, of critical physiological periods of need would include parturition, lactation, and then breeding that immediately follows the initiation of lactation. During these periods of time, the breeding female's body reserves of critical trace minerals are being uh, constantly drawn down. My opinion, the use of Multimin 90 allows a producer the option of assisting a beef female to perform at her genetic optimum through an optimized trace mineral nutrition program.
It's possible to incorporate Multiman 90 treatment in conjunction with other health protocols such as vaccination for respiratory disease and clostridial diseases. Mm -hmm.